to think about if you're going back to school as an older adult. What is your goal? Is your goal to get the highest possible grades or is your goal to get this degree? Time for an almost finished with school. Two weeks left, a little over two weeks left. It's three weeks left if I count my Elmhurst stuff, but although that takes time, it's not really stressful. I'm not stressed about going up to Elmhurst for two days. Um, it's learning, it's practicing with the dummies, but um, I'm not stressed about that one. Anyways, so I have like two and two days worth of classes left, and I thought it would be good to just give you guys an update. I'm pretty sure if I went back and watched the beginning of my videos from the program, I would have said it's busy. It's just like go, 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 go. They're teaching up here, but they're testing down here. It seemed a little too easy to get A's, in my opinion, uh, the first term. That has definitely gradually changed. I've mentioned before, I'm naturally a good test taker. I got, I believe in college with my first degree, I got two B's the entire degree and the rest were A's. So good grades come fairly natural to me. All that said, I definitely have seen this term has been harder. I don't want to say completely for grades because one of my classes, they're grading incredibly easy. And I hesitate to say which one because I really think it just kind of a little bit depends on what teacher you get. But I have three classes right now. I have ethics and legal matters. I have test taking strategies and I have community health. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people, if not everyone, is going to get an A in test taking strategies and ethics and legal matters unless they're just not doing the work. Community health is the harder class and I think there's plenty of people that will get A's in it. We just had our first exam and she said the average test score was 84 and she said that many people scored in the high 90s which means some people scored really bad too. I read over I think all of the module that was on the on the computer before taking that test and I watched a few extra YouTube videos about public health before taking that test. I got the average score of 84. That's not one of my better test scores, but again, I don't I don't buy the textbooks and definitely a lot of this was newer newer vocabulary lingo to me. So I'm I'm content more than content with getting the average test score. I got an 84, the average was 84. But time-wise, this semester has taken more time than any other semester or term. This term has taken more time than any other term. I actually quit my part-time job, Play Talk Grow, about three weeks ago now. No, maybe more like five weeks ago. I don't know, I quit it. I think it was more like five weeks ago. And I still feel incredibly busy right now. Again, I tell people this is doable, it's it's reasonable, if you have a good support system. Obviously right now, I didn't feel like I could work a part-time job and juggle uh, school and life. Now life is also busier. I have teenagers that need, that don't drive, and need to be taken to take their ACT. They need to go visit colleges. Two of them go to school five days a week, but only part-time, and it's a private school where we have to drive them. It's not far away, but we have to be free to drive them. We don't have a whole lot of nursing help, so also anytime Chris has to get the kids out because I'm at clinicals, it means taking Raylan, or if Chris was, he was taking Amber to a college visit, so I ran errands with Corey and Raylan all over creation uh, last Wednesday. So life is just crazy busy right now. I do think someone could juggle a full-time job and school if they had a good support system and didn't have really any other family obligations. And they and the good support system would, would also need to be a flexible workplace with clinicals this semester. There's just there's just so many clinical hours that have to get done. Work work would need to be flexible with you on what days you worked for this term. And I feel like you wouldn't be able to have time for anything else. And you still would need a good support system that understands and, and can empathize with how busy you are. 
part-time work in school would be much, much more doable. Like I said, I'm just juggling family in school and I feel pretty overwhelmed right now. I will say this, this last final term, particularly this last six weeks of the final term, so many projects, big projects. We had a community assessment it's broken into three parts, broken down to three parts. One person said they had 37 pages. And I don't remember if that was for part two or part three, but that's kind of crazy. And I am getting what in high school we called senioritis and a little more. I just want to get it done. And I turned in part one knowing it was not completely complete. I just put, I couldn't find data on this for some of the things. I still got a 96 on that, which I was pretty happy with. Yesterday, last night, I turned in part three of my community assessment. It was, it was 13 pages. So nowhere near that one person's 37, which I don't know if that was for their, I don't know if that was for their part three or their part two. And I don't know how many pages my part two was. It wasn't 37 pages, I'm sure. And I'm sure that person got a hundred too, if they did that many pages of data on their community, whatever. But I, with senioritis, you look at these big, big assignments, you know it's not perfect. You know you could do more. And I, I wanted to procrastinate and, and finish the assignment, perfect the assignment. But I told myself for my mental health, just turn it in. Just turn it in. Turn it in, Abby. It's it's probably it's probably a B. It's not gonna be lower than a C, I don't think. Now maybe maybe I did worse than I think, but I didn't want to turn it in. I was nervous about turning it in because I felt like it could have been better, but I also know time management and what is my goal in life? My goal in life is not to get straight A's. My goal in life is not to get the highest scores possible in school. And you need to think about if you're going back to school as an older adult, if you're going back to school while you're juggling work and family, what is your goal? Is your goal to get the highest possible grades in class? Or is your goal to get this degree? Now, if you're, if you're planning on getting more degrees after this, certainly your grades matter a little more because they might look at your GPA when considering if you're gonna get into graduate school. But if you don't think you're going back to school again, I'm not, what does it matter if you get a C in one of your classes? If that helps you juggle family or work or any other obligations outside of school better? It doesn't. So it was hard for me to do, to submit assignment, an assignment that I knew I could have completed better. And honestly, it's not even due till Sunday and I submitted it Thursday night, but I wanted to get rid of the, I have to do this feeling. And I knew it was good enough, so I just submitted it. And I don't know what grade I'll get, based on how she graded that other one and gave me a 96 that I put, you know, I couldn't find data on some stuff. I think I'll get at least a B. And it's not that I didn't try to answer all the questions, but I answered all the questions I could with what I felt was a reasonable amount of effort to seeking the answers. My facility did not have easy access to data on a lot of demographics of the population, which they wanted. And I just put, my facility did not have easy access to data on demographics of such and such and such and such, which they were asking for. I did try to go out of my way to name more information in some other areas than they asked for, but that's not as key of information that I put in there. But yeah, anyways, I just, I want people to think about if you're juggling a lot of things with school, what is your goal? Because it's easy to think if you've grown up in the school environment, if you know as a kid you tried really hard to get really good grades, it's easy to think your goal is A's or your goal is honor roll, but that's not your goal. That's not your ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal should be 
knowledge. I mean, one of my goals is to get the knowledge needed to, the most knowledge possible for my future jobs, which means I've asked the clinic, they have ostomies there, but not very often. And I've said, hey, will you help make sure I get to see ostomies when they're, when they're in the clinic? Because that's something I wanna learn about. So, you know, one of my goals is to get as much knowledge as possible and experience as possible that's going to help me for future nurse jobs I might want. That's a good goal. You pay money for education. You want to get educated. That does not have to do with my grades. I don't get higher grades for getting more experience with ostomies. That's my own personal, what I want to get out of school. My other goal, my main goal, to be really honest, is to get enough knowledge to pass the NCLEX so I have a nursing degree so I can be my daughter's nurse. Neither of those goals has to do with grades, other than I need to pass. So just something to think about, especially if you're uh, you know, an all-A student. There are some other students I've talked to in the class that I know, I don't know. I get the impression they feel like if they get anything less than an A, they didn't do good enough. And they are succeeding in getting A's on everything. I believe these students are succeeding in getting A's on everything. And one of them wants to go on to be a nurse practitioner. So, you know, that probably, it matters a little more for that student uh, who wants to get more advanced degrees. But some of them I'm pretty sure are, are done with school after this. And I just think, and they're really stressing about how much stuff they're having to do to make sure, to make sure they get an A on an assignment. And just think, if you're in another ABSN program, if you're in an accelerated program, what is your long-term goal? And what is your purpose for going into this? Because it's probably not to get all A's. And the amount of stress I would have added to myself had I tried to get that last community assessment assignment to an A level for sure and the clinical site assessment that I turned in last night to an A level, the amount of extra stress that would have been to ensure I felt it was going to get an A, it wasn't worth it was not worth it. So, I don't know, I'm just trying to help with your work-life balance, your family life balance, your work-family school life balance. Yeah, think about your goal and do, do not stress if you get a lower grade. I have told myself from the beginning of this program, C's are cool, B's are for balance. <laughs> I've told myself that over and over because I've known that a was not the goal. I still have struggled to probably I've spent more time than I've needed sometimes trying to ensure I'm doing what I need to do to get the assignment perfect. And I don't think in my heart I believe that B's were for balance and C's were cool because I've only gotten two B's so far. I'm, at, I'm aiming to get a B in community health possibly, but that really is like it's okay. It's okay. So yeah, this message, this message probably is mostly to my always a achieving friends, uh, people who are used to getting all A's. I don't know. I, I wish I'm at the end of the program a little bit. I, I wish I put a little less effort into some of my assignments already. And I'm trying to tell myself that for the two big, three big assignments I have left. Like, I have three big assignments left, and I've already started on all three of them. You don't have to get all A's. So, if you're used to getting all A's, but you're also trying to balance a lot of stuff, maybe rethink that. Do I really need all A's? Do I really need to turn in what I think is A-level work? And the answer is no, you do not. You have my permission to turn in that paper that you know is good enough to let you pass the class without working on it anymore. That's what I told myself last night. And I'm telling you, if you have a paper due and you're like, I don't know if it's good enough. I don't know if I should turn this in yet. It's a, you know, we don't curse on this channel because that's offensive to some people, but it's a half assignment. If it's good enough, to get you the grade you need to fulfill your goals, which shouldn't be related to grades probably, turn it in, it's okay. Also, the, but some of it, 
you know, I say I, I maybe worked yard. Part of why I studied so hard, like for med surge tests, was not the grade so much as this information I need to know and understand to do well on the NCLEX. So you might be able to get a passing grade on an exam without learning all the knowledge you need to know for NCLEX. Although even then, I'm, I'm taking NCLEX practice tests and always scoring pass on the, even on the uh, CAT ones, the computer adaptive test. I'm feeling confident. I wish I could take the NCLEX today. I'm feeling confident about the NCLEX. And I take the, the CAT test and I do feel like I'm guessing on tons and tons and tons of questions with them. But that's just how CAT tests are designed. You answer hard questions to give you harder questions. I'm almost always still completing it at the minimum number of questions with, with a good score. I feel like Elmhurst definitely has given me the knowledge I need to pass the NCLEX or help me know what knowledge I need. And then I've watched the YouTube videos. Simple Mike has given me a lot of the knowledge I need to pass the NCLEX. So yeah, that's my ramblings. 20 minutes. Sorry, Chris has to edit this. Hopefully I repeated myself a lot and he doesn't have to make it a 20 minute video. If you listen to this for that long, bless you. Bless you. Bye guys.